Section 2.13, Solutions of Linear and Quadratic Inequalities. This is part of my ultimate revision guide to further maths GCSE, the algebra section. This index button here will take you back to the index for algebra on YouTube. And then any practice questions, any questions I've done uh, from exam papers, I'll put links in down here. And I'm, we're going to put a link to how I'm doing this question as well, down here as well, to help you um, have a, maybe a different method for solving for factorizing quadratics with a multiple x squared. Okay, so um, essentially with inequalities, we start off by just treating them like they're an equation and just solve it as an equation. So pretend this is an e equal sign and do everything as if it was equal. So we, if this was an equals, we multiply out these brackets to get 8x minus 56. Keep the sign there, even though you're treating it like an equal sign. To get that, um, subtract the 3x to get 5x. So we've taken away 3x from both sides. Add the 56 to get 62. And then we divide by the 5 to get 62 over 5, um, which is the same as uh, 12 and 2 fifths, or 12.4. So there we go, x is less than or equal to 12 and 2 fifths. Now the only time we have an, a, a difference between how we solve an equation and how we solve an inequality is when the uh, in part of our solution we have to multiply or divide through by a negative number, either minus 1 or minus 2 or any negative number. Say for example when I took this away from here I got minus 5x here and then here I've got to divide by minus 5 to get to the answer. When I divide or multiply by a negative number, it turns the inequality around to point in the other direction. So instead of being x is less than 62 over 5, it would have been x is greater than 62 over 5. And that's the only thing you've got to remember about inequalities that's different to equations, the standard ones. Um, solving um, a quadratic inequality, what we've got to do here is, is to keep in mind what the graph looks like to help us solve it. So. Again, we just treat it like an equal. Solve it. Solve the uh, inequality, uh, the quadratic, by factorising. Five um, uh, x squared is going to be five x and x, and then we've got to think of uh, things that multiply to give us six. So one and six, two and three, minus six. So it's going to be negative. Probably the bigger one is going to be the positive value because this is positive here. It's not necessarily the case, but it's probably the case. So let's just try this. So if we've got uh, plus 6 and 5, that would make 30. Take away 1 is 29, that's no good. If we put the 6 over here, we get 6. Take away 5, that's 1. We want 13, that's no good. Let's try this one. 3, if I put the 3 in here, I get 3x. Take away 10, that's going to be negative, that's no good. But if I put the 3 in here, plus 3 here, 3 times 5 is 15. Minus 2, lots of x, gives us 13x. So that's the, that's the one we want. We've got uh, 5x minus 2 and x plus 3. Then we just work out what would be our solutions to this. Well, this would be plus 2 divided by 5. When you've got these things, you just you just change the sign and do this number divided by the number in front of the x, if there is one. If there's not, it's just this number. And this, this solution would be minus 3, because minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So, those are our two solutions to that equal to zero, but we want it greater than or equal to zero. So if we think about what uh, a quadratic graph looks like when it's 5x squared, it'll be u-shaped. And the two points where it crosses the, the um, axes, going to look a little bit like this, is minus 3, this is minus 3, and then minus uh, 2 fifths. So that's this solution here, and that solution over there. Okay, now we want it where it's greater than zero. So we want the bit where the graph is above zero. So this section, and let's just change the color for that, let's do it in green. So we want this section of the graph and this section of the graph. Okay, so that's going to be two separate inequalities. We've got the inequality for this, which is x is greater than, because we want it equal to as well, greater than or equal to two fifths. That solves it, that makes the, the quadratic bigger than zero or equal to zero, and then this one on this side is where x is less than or equal to minus three. So there's two solutions, one where it's bigger than two fifths, one where it's less than or equal to minus three. Okay, um, this one, similar sort of question, uh, 
but this time we're asked for the integer values, integer meaning whole numbers, that to satisfy the inequality. So if I had to do the whole numbers for this one, I would include, well I couldn't actually do the whole numbers for this one because uh, it just goes on forever, but if I was doing it between these two, so if I was making it less than, let's have a look at if it was less than zero, if this was less than zero, I wouldn't include this because that equals zero, so I'd, I would count minus two, minus one, zero, and then one would be past two fifths. So that would be just minus two, minus one, and zero would be the integer solutions where this was less than zero. Let's do it for this one though. Again, we're gonna just factorize. Now I'm gonna do, use a different method. I'm not sure if you've seen this before. Um, but what I'm gonna do to start with, I'm just gonna keep the four X in front of both uh, brackets. I'm going to multiply this 4 onto this 15 to make 60. And I'm going to try to make 60. And I think the ways to make 60, that because it's minus 60, they have to be 7 apart. They have to add to make 7. So thinking of ways to make 60, so I've got 60 and 1, 30 and 2, 20 and 3, 10 and 6, 12 and 5, um, and I think that's it, isn't it? So which ones combine to make seven when the bigger number is the positive number? So this is going to be negative. So 12 minus five is seven. So if I put plus 12 and minus five in there, okay, now that doesn't, that doesn't make that, but if we cancel this bracket down, any, any factor that we can find, so what goes into four and 12, well, that's four. And we make that X plus 12, uh, X plus three by dividing by four or factorising out of 4, probably better to say, and leave that one the same, then that actually is what um, factorises to make this quadratic. So we've got 3 times minus 5 is minus 15, um, x times 4x, um, what have I put the wrong way around? We've got there 12, 12x, minus 5, no 12x, there we go, 12x minus 5x is 7x and x times 4x makes 4x squared. So my solutions are x equals, oh, um, sorry, x is, le well, let's not worry about equals or anything, this is going to be minus 3, that's the number we're looking at there, and this is going to be 5 over 4. So if I was looking at the curve again, so a standard quadratic curve which crosses the y-axis at minus 3, and 5 over 4, so that's 1 and a quarter, so it's, it's slightly the, the y axis is going to be over there somewhere. So we want it less than 0, this is where it equals 0, so that's no good to us. So the whole number is where it's less than 0, well minus 2 would be less than 0, it's down here somewhere. Minus 1 is less than 0, that's down here somewhere. 0 is less than 0, it's down here somewhere, and 1 is less than 0, it's down here somewhere. So the, the integer solutions would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 1. So there are all the values. It gives us a value that is less than 0. Okay, so that's how we um, solve inequalities. Essentially, we treat them like an equation. Um, when we're doing quadrats, we need to look at the shape of the curve and decide which side we're going for. Are we going above? Are we making it greater than 0 or less than 0? And then just solve it from there. If this was, say, something like less than 3, we would just rearrange it by taking a 3 over here and then solving it to be less than 0. And it would give us the right answers. OK, um, this this method I've used here, I'm going to put uh, a link somewhere along this, this practice question section here, which shows you how to do that if you've not seen that before.